head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Inner Compass. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, it's all about the compass. But not necessarily one that you use going through the forest, we're talking about your inner compass because we're going to be talking about all the different emotions and things and reactions that happen in your brain. Today we're looking at a game called Inner Compass from AEG. Uh, this is for two to four players. It's sort of an abstracted game with uh, about different emotions. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Inner Compass is sort of an abstract game with a set collection aspect with a fluctuating market where over the course of the game you're going to be gathering cards and playing cards like two blue ones to score certain points but then this is going to cycle all the way down to the bottom and be worth less points and everything else will cycle up. So here's the main board. It's made up of four different tiles that are randomized so each game's different and we have a compass deck here with cards in each of the directions. Now what you're going to do is most of the time of your turn you're going to move. So you can move up, down, left, or right. You can't move off the board. So let's say this is where I started. Now we're playing a two-player game here. Let's say this player moves left. And since they moved left, the card on the sort of west or left side of this deck, this is the card they would pick up and put in their hand. Now if it's also the same color that they just moved to, like this case is blue, and this is blue, and you know the different colors in this game are different types of um, emotions. For example, the blue is sadness, uh, the black is fear, the yellow is happiness, love is uh, white, and red is anger. Now in this case, since we got the same, since we moved to the same uh, uh, color card, not only do we get this card, which we would anyway, but we also get this one off the top of the deck. Each player also starts with a certain amount of these cards, depending on where they are in player order, and then this just refreshes. Now, with that fluctuating market, like I showed you before, uh, let's say they had now two blue cards. They picked up one, maybe they got one off the top of the deck, or maybe they started with one. They can basically turn those two cards in because blue has the number two here. That means you can sell them, basically get rid of for two, and in this case, you would get four points. Now, points in this game are simply like tokens like this. You'll simply collect them up to the amount you get, put them face down in front of you. Then the market cycles. This will go all the way down to the bottom and everything else cycles up. So now on the next turn, if somebody wanted to sell two blue, they could, but they're only going to get one point. And by the way, it, they don't actually have to use two. Anything below this red line is one less, but you always have to have a minimum of one. In this case, one black or one blue could sell these, but they're only for one point. Now, if somebody sells one uh, of these sort of yellow or orange cards, now those ones, there's the least amount in, them, uh, in, the, in the entire deck, which is why you only need one, but you'd get six points. And this would fluctuate the market too, all the way down like this. Now, this is why I say you need at least one below this line. You only need one blue, but you still need one of these orange ones because you always need one. However, when this X gets to the top, it also fluctuates immediately down to the bottom. And so you're trying to find the right time to get rid of the sets of cards to time the market at the right time. Now what you're actually doing is imprinting a memory by those cards, those memories of sadness, you're imprinting it. Now because we imprinted blue, which was two blue cards of sadness, we take any one of these pieces on our board. Each player has their own board. We're playing the color of white here. So we can take any of these. Let's just say we take this one and we will place it essentially right where we are. We'll go right on top. But usually they're stand up like this, but to see on the camera, usually it's better to have it face down. And, and uh, at that point, then it'd be, you know, the next player's turn. Now let's say it's this player's turn. At the beginning of your turn, you could do a free move, which is moving as far as you want on a contiguous color. So they were on red, they can move all the way here for free. Now they can do their normal move, then they're going to move down. Now when you move down, you don't have to take the card that's in this spot. You could, and if you, if you did that, then you could possibly imprint a memory, which is playing the, you know, a set of white cards. Um, or instead of calling feel emotions, taking a card, instead of doing that, they could move again. So maybe they go like this. And then they can imprint a memory if they wanted to as well. But you can either sort of move a little bit further or take a card. And that's sort of some of the decision points in the game because sometimes you're going to be moving to certain parts of the board trying to, you know, uh, you know, basically, you know, imprint memories of certain colors. And these ones are definitely the harder ones to get. 
Now in this game, you can go to spots where players already have played pieces. So this blue player could imprint a blue memory here, but it costs one more than normal. So if this would have cost two blue cards, if someone else has already gone there, regardless of how many other players went there, it would cost one more, so three cards. So the interaction of the board definitely plays a way of, of making things harder to get if other players have gone there already and imprinted memories there. Now on your board, you'll see you have rows and columns. If you ever completely place the last piece of either a column or a row, you get to place one of these onto the scoreboard. Now this is called gaining enlightenment. Now you can select any one of these, but if you're the first person to go there, you're going to get three points immediately. And I like to put the token there to remind everyone else that they don't get the three when they go there. Now, these are randomized each game. There's three of these notebooks and then two of these sort of sticky pads. They're randomized, they're different every game. There's a lot of them in the game. This one says at the end of the game, you're gonna get a certain amount of points depending on how many of those pieces that you've placed in the corner of the board. Since there's only four corners, it goes four, 10, 18, or 28 points, but you gotta move pretty far to get that, to get all four of them. Structure, if you go here, you'll get a certain amount of points depending on how many of these structures you have that are three in a row, up or down or left or right. Uh, and then individuality, you're trying to create different groups that aren't touching contiguous. So like this is all one big group, that's a one group by itself, and you're getting two points for each individual group that you have. Also on these ones, this is one for every one of these you have on a red space, and this is two, uh, sorry, yeah, so each one you have on a red space, you'll get two, five, nine, 14, or 20 points, depending on how many you have. And then here, if you have one next to a blue one, it's two points for every piece that's next to a blue one like that. So essentially, even if this is next to one or more, this piece would be worth two, for example. So when a player clears their second row or column off, they could go somewhere else. And if a player gets their set third row or column off, the first one to do that gets this compass, it's three points, and uh, everyone basically gets one more turn, that'll be the end of the game. And at the end, you're simply gonna count up the points that you got from you know, uh, imprinting memories, as I showed you, and then you're gonna count up the points from your bonuses, and possibly this bonus three points, and whoever has the most is the winner. There's also an advanced mode. You flip your player aid over, and then when you imprint a memory from different rows, you get a certain different ability. Like when you do this one, you get a wild card bonus, which means when you're imprinting this blue memory here, you can use one card of a different color to act towards that. For this one, for each one you remove from here when you do this, you'll get a certain amount of points. The second one's worth two points, third's three, fourth is four, so on and so forth. For here, um, depending if it's your first, second, third, fourth, or fifth, you can take a piece that's on the board and move it orthogonally a certain amount of spots, which will help you set yourself up for those different bonuses. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, there is Inner Compass. This game, I like puzzly games, especially because a lot of times puzzly games have very randomized setups, they have uh, every game is, a, is a, the same puzzle you're trying to solve, but because the pieces are in different spots, they all feel different. And I tend to like games that are like that, as opposed to more like Euro games where you're just moving down the same tracks every game. And maybe this game I'll go down this track, and this game I'll go down that track. Sure, they give you different experiences, but after a while it gets old. Where I feel like puzzly games are always different because of the randomized setup and things like that. This one falls into that where it has, this is a very interesting sort of evolving puzzle that changes as the game goes on. Uh, you're moving towards specific spots, uh, you know, to try to you know play cards, but you're also possibly trying to get extra cards where, hey, you know what? I might not want to be moving this way, this direction, this turn, but if I do, I'm going to get an additional card and maybe I can end up playing cards over here anyway. So maybe a turn or two later than I normally was going to, but it will give me some more options, things like that. You're constantly thinking moves ahead where you're looking at the cards that are on the table. You're looking at where you're at. You're looking at where you want to play cards. You're looking at the fluctuating market. You're going, oh, I could go here. And then if that card's still there, I'll be able to go there and get an extra one. But I'll be, if not, I'll still be able to play cards there uh, and sell it. If nobody else sells it forward, you know, before me, I'll get a lot of points. So there's a lot of things where you're thinking two or three steps ahead. And I like it in games that do that, especially in games that have simple mechanisms like this game. I mean, you're simply just pretty much moving and then possibly playing cards or not. That's it. Um, I like that the board changes with other players, meaning if they've gone there before you, well, you can still go there. They don't block you, but it's going to cost you a little bit more to go there. And I like that because there's, that gives the game tension and some interaction on the board without it being, you know, frustrating to the point where it's like, oh, well, they just went there. I can't go there. I like the way that they did the interaction in this. Uh, I like that you're thinking about which bonuses to shoot for, uh, but you're also thinking about which one should I go to first to get the three extra points. Because as the game goes on, you're going to be placing these pieces. You're going to be looking at where those pieces are, looking at all the different bonuses and going, 
huh, which one am I already at? You know, which one's going to give me the most points now? Which ones do I think I can help, you know, build that up in the future? Oh, and you get, you finally get, you know, clear a row of column and you're like, oh, someone's already taken that. You know what? This other one I could also work on. That'll get me three points because I'll be the first one there. And then if I, hopefully I'll clear another row and I'll get that other bonus too. So there's some, also some, some tough decisions there too that I really enjoyed. Uh, even deciding which piece to take off your board while you're racing for the bonuses is interesting. It's like, ooh, if I take this one, I'm one away on the column, but if I take this one, I'm one away in the row too. Ooh, which one's left? Things like that. So it's just, it's cool that even when you're placing a piece, you have something to think about. My favorite part about the game is the fluctuating market. I always love fluctuating markets in games where you're trying to buy low, sell high. In this game, you're just, there's no buying. You're just taking cards, but you're selling them, essentially. You're getting a certain amount of points for when you turn those sets in. And I love it that there's interaction with other players. You're trying to beat players and play the ones that's that's the most points, but you're also possibly selling it for a little bit lower, knowing and watching what other players are taking and going, you know what, they're working on that too. I might as well sell these now, uh, change my plan so I can get it for you know the 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 four the three or four points versus the you know the the the, the six that I might be able to get, but I'll sell a little sooner so they can't get it and it drops it all the way down to the bottom. It's very interesting. I love fluctuating markets. It works really well here. And it does give the game a bit of a tenseness too because your max hand size is 10. You can't just completely hold up cards and just sell when you want. You've got to time it the right time. Timing the market's a big fun in this game. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, all the randomized setup, the board setup, the goals, all that. And of course, the advanced bonus actions is cool as well. It gives you even hard decisions whether to work down the, you know, which, which uh, row to take the piece from. And so in the end, this is just a very solid abstract with set collection in it. On the negative side, uh, I like the theme. It's cool and different, but really it's themeless. This could have been anything. It's pretty much a pure abstract game with some card play and set collection and such. So if you're looking for something that's thematic, this isn't going to do that for you. But if you don't mind to paste it on theme, you won't have problems with that. Uh, also, planning ahead and timing the market, which is my favorite part, uh, it's not as easy when you're playing with more than two players. Uh, that's why I think this game is best with two because you can really plan ahead more. You can, you, you know, you can kind of quantify what, with, what, where the market's now, where it might be a turn or two from now. But with more players, you don't really, it's harder to sort of time it right. It's a little bit more sort of, I'm going to roll with today, right now on my turn, right now, what am I going to do? Where with two players, a little bit more future planning. I like that the best. It still works well. Uh, but I think it works best with two. Now, this game I very much enjoyed to the point where I am going to be keeping it in my collection, which I don't do often these days. So I'm going to be inducting this into my library with a, a saxophone serenade. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. <laughs>the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear, it's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable Game Topper system and take advantage of some of the best 3mm premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.